Hey hey, Marcus Haas with you here, and today I thought that I would take you through the process that I go into just as I'm creating these Falcon Heavy launches and drone ship landings and all that sort of thing. This particular mission was captured um, towards the end of 2018, and I uh, haven't actually ever published the source of this not officially anyway, it's been up on my shared files and that sort of thing for quite a long time, but I've never actually done a demonstration of how you find this and how you edit it down. So I've got a link here in the description. If you follow that link, you'll see all my previous craft files and the Kerbal operating system script for Falcon Heavy. So you just download this, uh, it'll zip this up for you, it's just using Google Drive, and you'll see there all the other crafts I've done from 2016 right through to 2019, all that sort of thing. So once you've downloaded these files, you just basically bring them up on your computer, whatever it might be, you extract these uh, particular files out. You'll see there's an FH folder, and there is a functionscommon.ks file, and then there's also the craft file that goes with this exact configuration. So you just need to open up your Kerbal Space Program directory into the ships slash script folder here, and you just drop all those files in there. Now the actual craft file itself, you can pick up and move into your saves directory. Now that's going to be dependent on what you've called your save, but you can pop it in the VAB folder there. Now you'll see here there's a boot directory which is right next to it. Now this may not be initially in the install, I can't quite recall. In this is just a command that allows our crafts to automatically boot and run a program. So I've written this little one here which shows you how to do this. You'll see all it's doing is it's executing the fh slash fh.ks file which is the one that we see here from the zip file. So that's essentially the start of our program and where everything runs from. If we open that up we can now see the start of our program. You'll see here we're copying a bunch of different files into our program we have the functions common file, the Falcon Heavy functions, and the Falcon Heavy steps file. And this is of course exactly what you see in the structure that we've got out of our zip file there. Now the functions common file, I actually have one directory up because they're useful for all sorts of missions, not just Falcon Heavy. So I'll just quickly run you through the initial Falcon Heavy KS script because this is what drives everything after it includes all of these little dependent uh, function files. Now at the top here you'll see we have this very important step variable. This you can change depending on whether you're quick loading to test a certain section of your launch profile. Under here as well we have a bunch of variables that set up our launch profile to behave the way we need it to behave depending on the payload. And then we come down to the main area that the program will spend its time in. We have all these run step function commands which will essentially lock the script into these run step functions until they've been completed. So you'll see here that we have these is ship uh, function calls which basically check which part of the ship we're dealing with at any one time. There's the core after separation of the boosters, there's uh, Falcon Heavy Booster 1, Falcon Heavy Booster 2, and there's also Stage 2 after separation of that second stage from the main core booster. So as we run down these steps, the script will get stuck into whichever part of the whole process is relevant for that particular part of the booster. Now there's all sorts of other little bits and pieces that you need to have that goes along with this whole process. You need a few mods, you need the trajectories mod, and we'll talk a little about the limitations with that trajectories mod here shortly. But as you can see, down towards the end of the script, we're dealing with stage two after separation. The idea is for that stage two to get into orbit. So getting right back up to the start, we see our very first function is the Falcon Heavy initialization function. We can see that inside the FH functions file. In this file as well, there are a bunch of other wonderful, uh, really useful functions. I, I don't know how many times I've been asked how we activate the burned texture as the boosters come back down towards the drone ship. So this is how you do it here. It took me a long time to figure that out. So there's also a bunch of other things such as the grid fin steer functions and all these magic little uh, bits to the whole process which you don't have to write for yourself. You can sort of take these and adapt them and hopefully improve them because I am not a huge Kerbal operating system programming expert like many of the people in the wonderful KOS uh, Discord. So go and check that out. 
So the very first thing that happens is our ship is set to a launch step. The very first launch step will get stuck into this function loop here right at the top and we can see all the different parts of that step if we open up the Falcon Heavy Steps KS. Each step is actually quite straightforward once you learn how to read some of the commands. Now this particular video is the one that I did back in October of 2018. Um, you can actually check that out with the link uh, popping up in the top right right now. So you can actually follow this all through and it should be very, very close to what you see the script doing and the entire launch profile, that sort of thing. In the actual steps file, I've tried to make all the names of the functions fairly obvious, such as set engine thrust limit on the core and all of that sort of thing. So hopefully it's all fairly obvious. We're just coming up here to the end of this launch step. So as the boosters separate off, this is where we're jumping into the next step of the process. Now it depends at this point what part of the ship we're dealing with. In this case we're looking at the Falcon Heavy core step. So uh, the side boosters will be performing their own steps at this point, but the core will be running through and looping this section here. Now this step, Falcon Heavy core, is basically, it's it's pretty darn simple really when you really break it down. All it's really doing is awaiting until we've run out of fuel, in which case the available thrust is going to be set to zero because the engines have now stopped firing. At that point, the script determines whether we're into a core booster landing mode or an expendable mode. If we are in a landing mode, then it will actually do some extra things to that booster to make it come down to land onto that drone ship. Of course, meanwhile, this second stage is actually now running its own version of the script, telling it to stage, to fire off those fairings, and then basically it's business as usual for this part of the script until the booster gets all the way to a low Earth orbit, and then the stage two script is done. Looking back here at our main set of steps, you can see our Falcon Heavy Booster 1 and Falcon Heavy Booster 2 are going to run their own steps very independently of the main core booster and second stage. So after these other things here have run their process, uh, they all basically run the same drone ship landing sequence. The first step to this sequence after waiting for the correct time to start the burn is this entry burn here. So the entry burn fires off. At this point in time, we just want to reduce enough velocity to not come in too hot and explode our vessel. The grid fin steer scripts are then what you start to see here as we're running our suicide burn step. The suicide burn step kicks in just before we're about to smash into the ocean. So there it goes, suicide burn script, and then switching to the touchdown step, and finally after touching down, the end step, which basically turns everything off, ready to go. Now, of course, the uh, actual core uses the exact same set of steps. In fact, the only thing really that changes is just the uh, entry velocity and touchdown altitude and velocity settings, which you can all set in the top of the script there. So you can just see the core essentially is doing the identical thing that the other two side booster cores did. Now, just a little about the common functions file here. You'll see there's all sorts of useful tools and all sorts of things like that. Uh, setting engine thrust limits, action group settings, hover steering, all sorts of things that you could use not only for SpaceX related missions such as Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy, but you could use these for almost anything you want. You can see there that hover steering function has actually been called quite a lot here through the touchdown uh, function, the touchdown step. So yes, you can easily find all the things you need just by using the search function and you'll be easily able to trace things through. Now another really common question that I quite often get is how I'm controlling both of these side boosters at the same time using the trajectories mod because the trajectories mod can only do calculations on the active booster. Now you'll see here what I do is I do a complete burn with one booster making the second copy the actions of the first and then I switch to the second booster here and I just do a fine tune with the trajectories mod just to make sure that the second booster here is set up in the correct trajectory as well. Now another common question I always get asked is how am I controlling the stage 2 and the core and the two side boosters all at the same time and of course the simple answer to that is that I'm not. I'm actually recording them all separate with separate quick loads and quick saves and all this sort of thing to actually record the footage for you guys. So there is no way to have them all being controlled perfectly at the same time. They have to be within a couple of kilometers of each other which is why I can do the two side boosters in the one take. 
So there you go, our stage two has just finished its part of the script and gotten itself into orbit, and then the rest of your mission can continue, usually manually driven without the aid of Kerbal operating system at this point. So uh, you can download this craft from the same zip file, you can install it. Just remember you need all the mods that I've got installed. I have left a big list of the mods in the description as well. And keep in mind I'm running this all on Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2 with Realism Overhaul and Real Solar System installed. So it can be a bit of a headache sometimes to get all that stuff working. You can try all this in a later supported version of Kerbal Space Program. I just haven't done it in some of these old ones because I had everything working beautifully and I was too lazy to upgrade. So if you're wanting some help and assistance with this, I highly recommend you join our wonderful Discord. We have a Kerbal Operating System channel there dedicated just for this sort of thing. I'd like to give a huge thank you for my very dedicated quality control squad listed here. They donate their time to me simply to help research these topics and verify that all my work here is presented well. So if you'd like to be involved, again, pop into Discord and let's chat. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have the very same mission that was driven by these Kerbal Operating System scripts. So go and check that out if you haven't seen it. It's uh, it's very cool. We landed on the moon, did all sorts of wonderful things there. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.